And he was, I believe, the first man to bring up the idea of a united right. He's bringing a message to Canadians all across this land, crisscrossing all over the place. He's calling today from Calgary at just about 9 o'clock in the morning, I guess. My special guest on the phone is none other than Stephen Harper. Stephen, thanks for taking the time. I know you're really busy. How are you, Stephen? Yeah, very good. Nice to be here. I'm just on my way to the airport off to Toronto, so we, we seem to always be traveling in this country. What is the message that you've been bringing to Canadians across the country, Stephen? Well, you know, obviously I'm in a leadership race, uh, as everyone knows, but my message has really been that this uh, is time for Conservatives to uh, to pull together. We've uh, Peter McKay and I have co-founded this uh, new uh, Conservative Party, and it's time that we fight the Liberals and not each other. So I've been going across the country and telling people the reason I think I should be the leader uh, is that, you know, I'm one person in the race who has some political experience at the national level and has led a political party and led the merger. So those are my arguments. Well, my focus these days is really on the necessity of changing the government as we approach a federal election. Obviously, your party right now, obviously being a new party and whatnot, does, I don't think you have a policy book put together yet and in, leader, in the leadership change. Uh, I want to ask you specifically your I views. Say on that, if, I, if I could say that's not quite true. There okay. were some statements of principle, of course, that Peter McKay and I agreed to. Okay. The party has since the caucus has since issued some additional policies uh, in a number of areas, uh, an additional policy book. And uh, but you, I, I would you know agree. There's obviously still some work to be done. Great. Specifically, electoral reform, uh, Stephen. Yep. I'm wondering what your take on proportional representation. Do we need a new election system? Uh, I actually have, uh, for a number of years, uh, the view is different than my party. I've actually believed we do. Uh, and if I were Prime Minister, I'd like to appoint some kind of a, a process committee or commission to look at the options and put those options to Canadians in a referendum. But I have never been a fan of first-past-the-post voting, so I'd, I'd like to see that change. My own, my own, uh, my own uh, choice, frankly, would be something like a preferential system where, where uh, MPs have to have 50% of the vote to be elected. No, uh, no party would ever choose its candidates or leaders with less than 50% of the vote. I don't know why the voters should. Do you, do you agree with the, the basic premise that, based on your popular f support, that the seats should be divided up? In other words, if you get 35% of the support of the Canadian public, that you should be rewarded with 35% of the seats in the House? Well, that's, uh, that's different. That's proportional representation, and it's one of the options I certainly would be open to putting to people. I um, am not an advocate of that in Canada, and the reason is, for that to work, you really have to have multi-member districts everywhere. And in Canada, the country of its size, in most parts of the country, it simply wouldn't be feasible. Um, ridings are already extremely large that just represent one individual, or where, one, where you just have one MP. So I think that would be difficult, but certainly we could have a debate on that, and I, I wouldn't object if that's what the people chose. Stephen Harper is my special guest. Calvin Reed from The Standard, I'll let you ask the next question. Certainly. Hi, hey, Stephen. How are you doing today? Good. That's good. Uh, Yesterday, uh, the Belinda Stronach campaign came out uh, talking about the possibility or, or wanting to delay next week's leadership vote. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that. Well, I thought it was an awfully strange request. I have to tell you, uh, I never heard anything like it. It doesn't obviously speak to much confidence in that campaign. Uh, you know, they're claiming they have 7,000 members that weren't entered by the party, but I can tell you the party entered 2,500 members for them after the deadline already. The rules have already been bent for this campaign all over the place, and I'm getting awfully tired of it. And uh, you know, I, you know, we're we're obliged, we're supposed to have a fair race here, not just you know allow Belinda to sell memberships or you know fabricate them out of thin air, whatever whatever they do over there until such time as she has enough to win. So you know, I just think it's an outrageous request. All right. Uh, um, given the the tight timelines we have. Uh you're going to be electing the, the leader next week, and now Paul Martin's talking about the possibility of a, of a June vote. Um, are you guys going to be able to get past some of uh, this dissension that seems to be growing in the late days of the campaign and, and come together and put a policy together and run a campaign uh, in May for a June vote? Oh, I think absolutely. You have to remember that, uh, you know, I have the support of, you know, the vast, vast majority of the elected caucus. Uh, Peter McKay and I are the two who have been working really on the implementation of merging these two parties. I mean, I obviously will hope that uh, if I win, the other two candidates will uh, contribute positively to the party. But in all fairness, 
they are fairly outside of the um, fairly outside of the merger process and the election preparation process itself. Stephen Harper's my special guest. Calvin Reed from the Standard poking some questions at him. Go ahead, yeah. Cal. Yeah. Uh, Yesterday, Stephen, last night, uh, actually, in the Niagara Falls riding, um, one of your candidates was selected. It's actually a former Kim Cabinet or Kim Campbell Cabinet Minister. Sorry, uh, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on the slate of candidates that's being put together across the country, and, and uh, I guess what you're thinking about the people that are representing the party locally. Well, in all honesty, I'm I'm generally not very close to the process. You know, I've been traveling around the country because we're having this leadership race at the same time as nomination. The leadership candidates, I think, have frankly played a lot less role in candidate selection than they normally would um you know generally what i've seen i've been a lot of writings and i haven't met too many nominated candidates because it's underway but i met a lot of nominees and i think we're attracting generally speaking pretty good people stephen harper's my special guest he's your best bet to get rid of paul martin <laughs> front runner for the new well the conservative party of canada the new alliance between the the right wing of the, uh, I guess, political spectrum, even though we're not referring to it that much anymore. Stephen, I really appreciate your time. I know that you're busy. I just want you to get you to uh, have one last chance to get uh, a message out to the voters of Niagara and St. Catharines. Well, obviously, for, for those who are party members and my supporters, we just want to urge everybody to uh, get out and vote. We have a, an odd voting process in this party and mm. uh, just urge everybody to find out where they're supposed to vote or how they're supposed to vote and get out there and vote, because we're pretty confident if everybody gets to vote, uh, that we will uh, be victorious and be able to get on with taking on Mr. Martin. Thanks again, Stephen. Good luck in your nomination. I really appreciate you taking the time to come in. We're running way over. Too bad well, we couldn't take your calls, but I really appreciate it, Stephen. Thanks for both. Thanks for both. No thanks, problem. Stephen. I am Jim Fannin. It's one minute after 11. Angus is freaking. I'm taking up all the news time. He's going to talk real fast.